Praise be to our God. As we come uh, to receive God's word, shall we turn our Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 11? Gospel of John, chapter 11. Verses 1 uh, to probably verse 4. We will read these few verses responsively as we look to the Lord for the word that he has this evening. Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 to verses, actually 1 to 6, we will read these verses responsively. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. A six. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Shall we pray and look to the Lord? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for this precious moments you are giving at your feet to come to the physician of our soul, the greatest physician, the lover of our soul, the maker of our soul, the redeemer of our soul. Where else can we go apart from thee, you who have the words of life? And we come to you this evening desiring to be spoken by you, to be ministered by you, and to hear your true heart beat and also, Lord, your living word come alive to us, that our lives may be enabled in every front, in every area, in every aspect to face things that we face in this world, just like how you did. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you walked upon this sod, this dusty grounds for us, to not only die for us, but also to live as an example for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have modeled for us to imitate you and also, Lord, to walk in your footsteps. We have not in ourselves to do what you have called us, but you are able, Lord, to enable us. And unable as I am to do anything here, Father, I pray that you would speak through me to me to each one of us this evening. Bless our time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. These uh, days have been uh, have been uh, moved more and more to do a survey of scriptures from the portions that have actually been already covered. Last time I happened to cover the book of uh, the letter that Paul wrote to Philippians, and uh, we've done a sermon series and have wonderfully walked through the Gospel of John extensively to understand how the very living um, Word of God had come to walk upon this earth to give to us all that I am statements from which we have come to know this God in a personal and an intimate way. And uh, today, there is a, a kind of a little uh, different survey that I would do from the Gospel of John, not that I would touch every chapter or uh, every portion, but uh, in a different angle. Because the Lord Jesus, as he lived upon this earth, he happened to face things that every human being would face. Um, and he 
not only face the way we are called to face, but he also gives to us his heart in how when we face things in this world, we are not only uh, challenged, uh, more importantly, we are comforted and also we are enabled to face them in the way that the Lord would want us to face. Now, I'm also aware that the children are here. Every time I preach, I try to keep my, my little congregants much more attentive. So what I, just before this, uh, the service, I mean, after, after I came here, I just felt it might be a good thing to have these children be engaged, so I have some list of all the things, because this survey kind of ser sermons would uh, make us kind of give up on the list if the list becomes big, right? So I have some sermons, uh, I have some sermon notes as uh, the slides are going to come up, but it's going to give to us uh, the list of things that we would observe. So as we begin, I want to begin by a, a little boy story. Um, a little, I mean, when we come to how children ask questions, they are, they're going to be eye openers many a time. We learn a lot from the questions that they ask. We would at some point think, I wish they stop asking questions <laughs> after some point. But nonetheless, they do keep on asking and making us to rethink what we say sometimes. We just casually say some things and we would have to take our statements back at times. Such was the case of a dad like this and uh, they both were walking upon a shore and there's a, a, a dead seagull that was lying on the shore as they were walking on the sand. And this little boy curiously asked, uh, what happened dad to this seagull? Seems dead and uh, are lying here. And the daddy quickly wanted to make this little child not be aware that this seagull is dead. So he, he said, son, uh, of course, he said that the seagull died. He died and went to heaven. He was trying to make it so nice and well, uh, easy for the son to consume that truth. And as the dad replied, the boy thought for a moment and he asked, did God throw him back from heaven? <laughs> Why is he lying here? <laughs> he then had to think, do seagulls go to heaven now? <laughs> right? Many a times we just say some things for our little kids to get past the, that time of thinking. But the truth is that uh, as death comes in this world, as sickness comes, there is something that is so different about how we face these dark realities of life. And you know, Jesus was upon this earth like each one of us when we hear the sickness of our own loved one, when we hear the death of our own loved one. He models for us in a wondrous way how you and I can uh, face and uh, as not only in the flesh and blood that we are in, uh, he is aware of all that humanity undergoes, that he has taken the taste of all that we face in this fallen world, but he is able to do more than what any other person can do, which is just give some comforting words. And so I want us to walk through a few portions here in the Gospel of John, uh, before we go into chapter 11, where we come to see how Jesus faced the sickness, uh, the news of the sickness, I want to see, show to us that there are about few things that we see in the Gospel of John that Jesus, as, he, as his life story, his death, burial, and resurrection is being recorded for us by, God, by John, he captures to us that there are few things that Jesus faced upon this earth. And he faced head on. He didn't uh, retreat from facing them. And there are things that we generally don't like to face. Talk about uh, some of our children might be afraid of getting into darkness, right? You want them to go get into the bedroom and get something for them. Even if it is broad daylight, they don't want to go. 
leave about uh, pitch darkness or when it is night time to switch on the light uh, all these things will be difficult but even in the broad daylight they are afraid to go to darkness but a lot jesus who is called the light of the world he faced darkness not the darkness that i am talking about in the physical sense darkness to its pitch or to its highest order because this darkness is not just physical but more importantly moral and spiritual as well that's why the bible as we come to see here right here in john chapter 11 verses 9 and 9 to 11 jesus talks about that to his disciples he says as uh, this conversation goes after jesus gets the news about lazarus being sick he stays back and uh, he then goes about to say let's go to judea the disciples prohibit and then jesus answers in verse 9 and says are there not 12 hours in the day if any man walk in the day he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world but if a man walk in the night he stumbleth because there is no light in him these things said he and after that he said unto them our friend sleepeth i'll stop there jesus faced darkness and he says here that there is this physical darkness that we won't want to go but more importantly we can go in the day daylight and uh, though it might seem like physical darkness he is also talking about the moral and spiritual darkness that man's heart is filled with and because of which there is this looming darkness that is there in this world come with me to john chapter 1 we all know as john introduces jesus he says there is a light that has come into this world in verse 5 john chapter 1 verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not this world has no clue about the light of the world who stepped into darkness and uh, because of their moral and spiritual darkness they are unable to even comprehend this light that is shining and jesus who is the light of the world in john chapter 3 he explains himself as he speaks about this darkness in verse 18 john chapter 3 verse 19 he says and this is the condemnation the light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are where evil this is jesus explaining to us the moral and the spiritual darkness that the heart of every human being is filled with only if they are willing to acknowledge that that god had sent his beloved son not to condemn the world in the darkness but to save them and to bring them into this great light and that's why in john chapter 8 verse 12 jesus says i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life this light of life which gives healing under his wings he comes and he ushers change transformation newness so much so that men would not any more love darkness but would love light and the deeds of light that they want to be after so here we come to see that uh, the first thing that we would see is darkness um, that this world is filled with that jesus did face not only darkness jesus faced depravity jesus faced depravity to the core uh he saw that human heart is not just vile but depraved beyond their own ability to repair depravity is beyond their own ability to repair that's the condition of human heart and we see that in john chapter 8 wonderfully where he was speaking to these pharisees and sadducees in chapter 8 verses 39 he was talking to these jewish people and they say we are abraham's children we are never slaves or oh, sin we are never slaves to sin that's their understanding about themselves physically they were they were being oppressed by this roman empire 
spiritually they were being oppressed by the god of this world and they say we are slaves to nobody we are free we are children of abraham that was their depraved condition and is the same of every human being till we understand that jesus did face depravity he faced darkness he faced depravity not only that he he, he also faced deception come with me in the same chapter john chapter 8 verse 44 we come to see that he talks about how there is this father of lies who is in this world who had gone about to deceive everybody ye are the sons of your father he says in john chapter 8 verse 44 this is deception to the highest order that everyone had been deceived right from our forefathers as adam and eve when they were in the garden the subtle lie that the enemy put you know god you, you know did god prevent you from having something in this world did god give you a command actually god is not that good he is wanting you not to enjoy some things and he sh- casts a shadow of doubt upon the goodness of god to buy into the lie of the, de- the devil and thereby comes this fall that all of us have been ensnared and deceived by the devil the father of lies who is a murderer from the beginning john chapter 8 verse 44 he murdered our pre- first parents that when they sinned in rebellion to god they died and they abode not in death because there is no truth in him but he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it so jesus faced not just darkness depravity deception quickly i'll walk through the list disease we see that in john chapter 9 where uh, there was a man who was born blind from his childhood he was born blind the disciples asked this wonderful question who is it who sinned lord was it his parents or was it he because his man was born blind but jesus has a different answer about the dis- the disease and he said of course he says i am the light of the world but before that um we see in verse 3 he says that the works of god should be made manifest in him neither because of this man's sin or the parents sin but it is for the works of god to be manifest in him you know jesus fa- faced disease head on and he healed every disease that was brought to him because he is the maker and creator and healer he is the great physician not only that we see he faced death and that's what we would look at how jesus faced disease and death head on as we would look at in john chapter 11 briefly he was facing this news of the sickness and death of his own of a loved one he did love lazarus as martha and mary know and relay that to our lord jesus christ we'll come to see that so there are three things that martha and mary at least do which give to us what we are to do when our loved ones who are at the point of sickness and death what are we to do i just want to highlight those three things we've actually walked through this chapter so it's just more of a review and in this survey i want you to take note of all that jesus brings to the table in how he transforms how a christian faces the news of the sickness of a loved one and a death of a loved one as opposed to the one that is there in this world how a christian faces because it is a christian's privilege to follow after his or her master so that his or her master can enable them to face things in this world by his strengthening without which we have not to face things that are there in this world and so quickly three things the first thing that martha and mary do in verse 3 as we see martha and mary therefore his sisters sent john chapter 11 verse 3 therefore his sisters sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick you know the first thing that we do when we hit 
or get this news of sickness and or even sometimes death we tell it to our lord we relay that to our lord they just got that news to the lord not that the lord is not aware of it by the way but the lord can do something about it and he is the one who can do something different than anyone and everyone who is around us not only here about the sickness even in the gospel of mark we find if it not be for the sickness on to death but even the normal sickness like fever we see in mark chapter 1 verse 31 uh, we come to see about simon's wife's mother simon's or simon peter's mother in law mark chapter 1 verse 30 but simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her they just relay that to the lord they just bring it to the lord we don't have to make a big prayer a simple reality of going to the lord and relaying it to him is our part and our portion the first thing that we do telling it to the lord the second one that we need to do is realize something in uh, martha's way and or mary and martha's way of communicating that to the lord they also realize this in 11 john chapter 11 verse 3 therefore his sister sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest you know it's a privilege if we can have this realization that the lord has made our loved ones in this case martha and mary's own brother jesus own portion lazarus knew a lord jesus certainly he loved a lord jesus of course because jesus loved him and so they know they knew they realized that the lord also loved lazarus right and so it is a privilege when we can also testify that our loved ones who are sick or even nigh on to death are in the lord that they have this assurance of salvation of the lord you know that's that's a a matter of difference between heaven and hell that our comfort of our loved ones knowing the lord being loved by the lord that they are in the lord is such a comfort that is unlike any other comfort that we can have yes lazarus was going to die here in this uh, story but nonetheless this realization this reality that you and i can have that our loved ones are in the lord that they are loved by the lord is such a jo- such a privilege and comforting thing so quickly the third thing and then i'll go to the next part of the list there are many parts many lists at least six of them so i'll have to be very quick so here in uh, john chapter 4 11 4 to 41 we see the whole of the story that jesus clarifies that the sickness had come not unto death as we read in verse 4 this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god that the son of god might be glorified thereby you know when we come to see about the death of our loved ones or the sickness of our loved ones as well as jesus says it is primarily for the glory of god that they would receive sickness if they are in the lord it is primarily for the glory of god we would see that more clearly as i go to the next slide giving to us the list of the things for which god had made us actually even sickness is for the glory of god and we see how beautifully beyond the thinking of martha and mary that god turns the sickness though to death for a moment but for his great glory to even today give to us that jesus has power authority to turn death even after four days to reverse death in any person's life in any person's death by the way so jesus has that power it only is these three words whatever name come out lazarus come out verse 41 we'll come to that 
uh, verse 43, I suppose. We read that. He cried with a loud voice. He doesn't need to cry out with a loud voice, by the way. That verse, to, uh, somebody said, uh, if he just said, come out, <laughs> there would be a big trouble. You know why? <laughs> Everybody would come out from the grave. <laughs> I hope, uh, and thankfully, Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, right? I don't know how Jesus could manage that only that Lazarus came out. I mean, there could be many Lazarus as well. Imagine if there were 10 Lazarus who were dead, all the 10. But Jesus knew whom he was telling. And he could say, Lazarus. He didn't even say, you brother of Martha and Mary, come out, right? Jesus in his own way, can limit whom he is calling out. And such is his power, immense power, to turn death to his glory. That was a proof. By the way, even through the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are many times he raised people from the dead. But he didn't go to every hospital or I don't know if hospitals were there. Probably, yes, because Luke was a physician then. Probably there were some hospitals. He didn't go about to heal anybody, but any death that he faced, it had to be turned around. Nain's, um, the, the son of uh, the widow of Nain, he was raised up. That was a pyre going around, carrying to be buried, and he was raised up. Death reverses when it comes face to face with this person called the resurrection and life. Death is shattered when it goes, when he who is called the resurrection and life enters the grave. And it is made as a sleep because he tasted death for us. We all know those things, but I want to just relay this of how we are called to do these three things. First, relaying, realizing, and then recognizing that that is primarily for the glory of God, or even for that matter, sickness. Now quickly, man, as God had made, I was saying, even sickness and death is for the glory of God. Before I come to why I say that in a little more detail of why God had made man, and for what he had made man, there are few things that God had not made man for. We need to understand this very clearly because many, thing, many times we come close to these things and we need to be mindful that this is not what God had made as, us for. And I want you to capture this small list. I, don't, I didn't want to exhaust myself, just five of them for which you and I have not been made. And we need to keep ourselves from it. First, we all know that you and I have not been made for sin. We know that because when God made man in his own image, for 100 years or so, the history um, through, the, through the understanding of the, the first five books, when Adam and Eve lived, at least they say for 100 years they lived sinless life. They had fellowship with God because Seth, who is born after Abel and Cain um, was born, Seth was born when Adam was 130 years. So even if that 30 years was the time when Abel and Cain was born, at least for 100 years or so, Adam and Eve lived a sinless life enjoying the fellowship of God. Giving to us a clue that God had made man to to bring forth such an intimate communion in holiness that he had made him, we would see the list of all the things he had made, but he's not made man for sin. Sin is not what God had made man for. In fact, sin is called the sting of death. In 1 Corinthians, we know that in chapter 15, verse 56, 55 onwards, we see sin is the sting of death. The reason why death is so painful, bitter, and uh, horrifying, and uh, harrowing is that there is this sting of death. And you know what? When Jesus took death on your and my behalf, he, he took away that sting, and he had made 
death powerless so much so that it is just like a a, a vicious serpent without the poison right the sting is removed and such is how god had made jesus had made in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 54 verse 54 and 55 55 oh death where is thy sting because jesus had taken it when he tasted death when he conquered death that sting of death is sin as we read in the 56th verse the sting of death is sin man had not been made for sin it is a choice of man to rebel against god and let sin enter and take dominion of him now quickly the second thing god had not made man for is many times after the sin entered into this world the self had become most important thing for him he became self centered he is had become self conscious and he longs for self glory this is not what man had been made for man had been made to be not self centered and self glory but god centered and god glorifying and uh, even after coming to christ many times it's not easy for us to get over the self and the selfishness right it lingers on no wonder jesus in the calling to the disciples he says in luke chapter 9 verse 23 we all know this the calling to the disciple is that if any man will come after me let him deny himself what deny him self and take up the cross daily and follow me the cross that we are going to carry our self need to be put upon it and here we come to see man had not been made for self man had not been made for sickness by the way sickness was not there until sin entered it was disease is in this world because of the fall and the rebellion that had come into this world by man's choice we never see adam and eve falling sick we never see lord jesus falling sick because he wasn't sinless but he took our sickness our diseases upon the cross of calvary that's why he is the greatest physician and so man had not been made for sickness man had not been made for solitude by the way the the worst kind of the effects of this covid that we come to hear is that in the time of sickness and uh, death news going around that this this sickness of covid makes every person that is affected to be brought into solitude in the time when we need people the most people that are loved ones our loved ones our family members our 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 uh, church members who need to be there to be able to pray to be able to encourage that's the very time that they are kept in isolation no wonder why we hear so many deaths right man had not been made for solitude by the way when we think about solitude i also have to clarify that solitude with god is not solitude man actually this is a quote by woodrow crowell who says you are never left alone when you are alone with god it seems you're never left alone jesus told time to make time to be alone with the father but you know he was crying out in agony when he said my god my god why have you forsaken me that is not what man had been made for but jesus had to endure that for us in that death that he was enduring for the punishment of your and my sin now quickly closing um the last part man had not been made for separation by the way one of the many definitions that you find for death death has many definitions death is defined as wages of sin right we come to see that wages of sin is death we also see that it is an appointment it is appointed for man to die but after that judgment when i think about appointment um this is a, a very interesting story that i happened to read it says 
an old legend of of a merchant who lived in baghdad by the way i don't know why they knew, took the name of baghdad there this is in iraq the capital city uh, there was a merchant and a servant um and not very long the servant came back uh, as he was sent to the marketplace to buy something he came back trembling and and he came in running and in fear and he comes and tells his merchant and master and says you know what master i'm terrified i have seen a woman she's clothed in all her black clothes this is baghdad right i mean everybody wears black clothes i don't know why he saw only one woman and uh, on her face somehow he read this this word called death and uh, his his uh, knees started to shiver and he trembled in fear and ran back to his merchant and so the master was horrified what kind of this woman is it and uh, he couldn't wait a moment and he asked the servant asked the merchant or master and said master can you please give me your horse i need to run i need to as fast as possible get away from this city of this baghdad i need to go to this place in the hills there samara is the hills place hilly place that i need to escape this woman can't come there and this man in that trembling fear takes the master's horse and gallops as fast as possible on his way to that hills and you know this master really want to know who that woman is who terrified his servant and so he goes into that marketplace he finds really a woman full all full clothes in the marketplace he goes face to face and talks to her this merchant and says ma'am why did you scare my much my servant and uh, this is what has happened he came it seems you showed a surprise kind of face and that brought his him a great fear oh then the the lady replied the lady who is called death it seems she replied that was not a threatening gesture death said it was only a start of surprise i was astonished to see him in baghdad for i had an appointment with him today tonight in samara <laughs> and uh, that's why he is galloping there <laughs> she was surprised that he's in baghdad i have an appointment with him in samara talking about death being an appointment many a times we don't want to keep that appointment we somehow want to escape that appointment but you know what god in his wondrous work turns this appointment into an appointment of promotion not an appointment of demotion which is why that person is scared but an appointment of promotion that is so precious in psalm 116 we read precious is the death of his saints why is it precious there are times where jesus as he rises up to receive the first martyr stephen to usher him welcome him to that promotion that he is receiving at least at minimum he sends an angels to usher his loved one that's what has happened to this other lazarus by the way whom jesus names in his parable right the rich man and lazarus right there we see they were an angelic host they were sent to usher lazarus into abraham's bosom such is the preciousness of that promotion time not an appointment of demotion and so we see here that death has been defined many ways one is wages another one is appointment quickly i'll close it says death in another way is separation we would not see it this way but death separates death separates at least it separates our soul from our body in a physical sense the spiritual death separated us from a holy god a sinner is separated a spiritual death is a separation of a holy god from a sinful being like you and me and you know what the scare, the worst thing is the eternal death the second death the bible describes is a separation from the goodness of god eternally for which man had not been made 
I think of why our brother's family, the Gautam's family is separating from us to LA. This, we have not been made for that. We've been made to be together. We've been made to be one, right? And God in his time is going to bring us back together. And uh, as we move on, the, f- the f- five things that we saw that man has not been made. You know what? I have seven things that what man had been made at this pace. I just want to list because I did this chapter of Gospel of John chapter 17, which is where we get all this list. Man has been made for his glory. Gospel of John chapter 17, if you go to that quickly, just look at that verses as I tell that to you. Um, And we would finish this list of seven very quickly. By the way, this is when Jesus prayed, when he was facing death head on. Gospel of John chapter 17 is the high priestly prayer of our Lord when he is facing death head on. And he didn't take his face away from it for not a moment, he faced it head on. And he looks to this cross of Calvary and he prays earnestly. In these 26 verses, he had only three verses to pray for himself and the rest of the verses to pray for everyone who would follow him. What a height of selfless sacrifice that Jesus was ready to lay down his life for. And in the midst of that, he was praying for seven things that man has been made for, that it should be fulfilled in every disciple, you and me included. Jesus prayed for you and me who would believe the word that would be spoken by the apostles. And so in these 23 verses that he prays for you and me, Jesus prays that he should be glorified. In chapter 17, verse 10, John chapter 17, verse 10, Jesus prays, that I am glorified in them. Man had been made for the glory of God. We know that Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 talks about it. For my glory, to shew forth my praises, I have made them, right? And Jesus prays that, that they should glorify me. I should be glorified in them. That's what he was praying for the disciples there. And he prays for you and me even today. He is interceding up right beside the right hand of the Father, What is he interceding for you and for me? He's interceding that he should be glorified in you. Whether it be sickness, whether it be death, or in in our life, he should be glorified. That is why you and I have been made. Not for a cheap purpose of just living and making our ends meet. That's the very lowest purpose. Yes, that is important. I agree. No doubt about it. But the highest purpose is that God should be glorified. Christ should be hallowed in our sickness, in our health, in our life, in our death. Christ should be glorified. And secondly, God had made man for eternity, not for temporal time. And in verse 3, we read that this is eternal, life eternal, whom he had sent sorry, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is why I came into this world, that they may know eternal, eternal, the eternal one and have eternal life. And that's why God had made man for glory, for eternity, for ecstasy. You know what? In John chapter 17, we might find this verse in very interesting. In verse 13, he prays that his joy might be full in us. You know, the word ecstasy is joy to the fullest. We have petty pleasures in this world. When we get promotion, when we are, get, when we are married or when we buy a house, we have joy. I'm, I'm joy that we can share with others and our joy is multiplied, right? But the highest order of joy is when Christ's joy is made full, complete it seems. And that's what Jesus prayed, that my joy, that is Jesus' joy or Christ's joy, is fulfilled in themselves. That is, he prayed for ecstasy. He made us for ecstasy. That's why in in, uh, Psalm, Psalm 16, the last verse, it says, at my right hand are pleasures for evermore. 
that's why he has made us to enjoy pleasures at his right hand in his presence forevermore quickly fourthly he made us for sanctity in chapter 17 verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth god made us not for sin but for holiness that we might be set apart we might be made and kept holy not only for sanctity to speak truly in the same verse he says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth you know god has sent jesus into this world that he would be the witness of the truth it seems jesus when he was standing before pilate pilate asked this greatest question what is it what is truth but he didn't wait for the answer thy word is truth jesus himself says i am the way the truth and the life jesus is truth he is the very personification of truth he is the source of truth and we are witnesses of him and witnesses of the truth and you know we are called to speak truth in love ephesians 4:15 talks about it you and i are called to speak the truth in love some sometimes it's not easy to speak the truth but we are called to speak truly always and that's why we have been made to be witnesses and to speak truly quickly we've been made for him only many times we've been made we think we've been made for ourselves we think we made we've been made for our own family that's why god made us as a family we think we've been made for our parents we think we've been made for our children we live for everybody else but we have been made for him only exclusively for him no wonder jesus prays that in john chapter 17 verse 23 he says i in them thou in me he wants you and me to be in him and he should be in us exclusive own ownership rights and quickly he made us to pour his love perfectly it seems the last verse in john chapter 17 verse 26 he says wherewith thou has loved me actually that the love wherewith thou has loved me that is he's telling to the father you loved me with your with highest love the agape love the love between the god the father and god the son and he says that love should be perfected in us it should be poured in us it should be in us it seems that's why he made us in all these seven purposes when we see death doesn't disturb or doesn't even come close to disturbing any of these purposes a child of god is at no loss when he or she is going to sleep in christ it is in fact a gain it is in fact a promotion it is in fact only a rest from the labor of this world that's why he or she can face death differently he or she can face the news of the death of our loved ones sickness of our loved ones differently quickly in closing now people might be tired six things now how long this is going to go i'm going to only go to the list i'll close quickly um in john chapter 11 now i come to the main portion <laughs> John chapter 11 there are six things that Jesus did when he faced the death of the of the sickness the news of the sickness how Jesus faced the news of the sickness of the loved ones Jesus faced the sickness of the loved ones knowing uh the timing he knew the timing in John chapter 11 verse 6 he says he waited for two more days right the joel covered this portion in the message he gave in john chapter 11 when we did the sermon series from gospel of john the resurrection and life he touched on this part uh there is a timing of god with regards to the sickness and death of every individual in this world you and i have no way of changing it no way of extending it no way of decreasing it it is appointed it is a promotional timing of god and jesus knew that timing 
And so the timing of Jesus, he goes and does things in his own timing. That's the way Jesus does this. Jesus does risk taking when he faces the news of the sickness of our loved one. In verse 8, the disciples prevent Jesus from going to Judea. When he says, let us go to Judea, the disciple says, Master, last time you were going to Judea, they wanted to stone you. Are you sure you want to go to Judea? He says, yes. <laughs> That's how Jesus says that he would not linger, not even step back to take risk to do something about sickness and death, but he will come in his time. Quickly, Jesus knew the death of Lazarus even before he came to that town, right? This is such a comforting thing that God knows that moment when he calls us unto glory. Jesus tells that to his disciples, right? Our friend Lazarus sleepeth in verse 11, but I go that I may wake him out of the sleep. The disciples didn't understand. Oh, if he's sleeping, he's all fine, he's all fine right? That's what they think. In verse 13, Jesus spake plainly of his death. And then, as soon as the disciples heard of the death, I'll, I'll probably uh, stop uh, with this slide. Um, I'll, not, I'll not go further. Uh, but uh, for the sake of time, uh, let me hurry up here. Uh, what Jesus knows is that he knows the exact time when Lazarus died. And uh, he then relays in verse 25, as we have already studied this portion, that he is resurrection and life. And uh, he that believeth on me, though he were dead yet, he shall live. This is a promise of bodily resurrection. Bodily resurrection that God had given to all those that believe in him to rise up in the resurrection of life. There are two kinds of resurrections, by the way. Not to partake in any resurrection, but in the resurrection of life. Quickly, you know, one of the response that Jesus had, he's not ignorant of all that that goes on when we face death. Jesus, in John chapter 11, verse 35, the shortest verse of the Bible, we read, Jesus he goes through everything that we go through to the closest proximity. So much so that he knows the effects of this fallen world and all that death brings in. And uh, Jesus wept. There are many reasons uh, that we can walk through. But more importantly, very clearly, the Bible describes that we are called to weep with those that are weeping. In a simpler sense, Jesus was one with the loss of Martha and Mary, and he loved Lazarus, just like the sisters have mentioned to him. And so he wept. Not only that, the joyful thing that Jesus had raised Lazarus back onto life, right? We see that in verses 44, 43, 44, Lazarus come forth and Lazarus had come out of the grave and he was asked to let him go to loosen the, what, what he was tied with. And so when we see all that Jesus does, that he can make a difference in our lives, in how we are to face the news of sickness and death of our loved ones, you and I can take note of how Jesus faced and how he changes things as a child of God that when we face, you and I can face differently. Yes, we will have that pain of death. The three things that we would have, uh, which is Jesus did face death, he tasted death, and he knows the pain of death. And in all these three things, he is right there with us, whereby he will be with us in our death, and also in the death of our loved ones, as they know and are in him. And with that, he makes us to face this news of the sickness of our loved one, or the death of our loved one, in a very distinct way, unlike the people of this world. 
and we would be able to walk in the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ in how he faced so that we may be enabled by him to face like him with hope and with looking forward to seeing them again. It's only a time, a brief moment of time in the history of eternity that we will be separated. But there will be a time where there will be no more death. There will be no more pain. There will be no more tears. Where the Lord and all our loved ones, those who are in Christ, would be with him together, rejoicing as the word of God promises. Let's close here and ask the Lord for his blessing upon this word. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this evening, these precious moments that you're giving to us to come and consider your word, the true and the living word that speaks life. In the midst of all that we are hearing day in and day out, day after day, in the news that we get to hear. Father, we thank you for you make all the difference. That you know it firsthand, having faced it when you were upon this earth. Tasted it. Took it for us and laid down your life that you can be with us. Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. Father, we thank you, we praise you that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And with you, the resurrection and life in us, Lord, we too are enabled to face death and the news of sickness and death of our loved ones in a very different way, with hope and with much assurance to look forward to for the glorious hope where I had not seen, ear had not heard of the things that God has in store for those that have loved him. Father, help us to live in this world for your glory and to look forward for your appearing, glorious appearing. And if we were called, Father, or if our loved ones are called, Father, help us, Lord, that we be given the strength to face just like how you face. Thanking you and praising you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord the Father, communion of Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen.